Uh, Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here, x Dedicated. Got a few things to talk about today. First one is Process Lasso. I came across this last week, I saw a YouTube video and I thought I've really got to try this. And it works to some degree. What is Process Lasso? Well, let's have a look. First of all, go to Google and type in Process Lasso. Really quite straightforward. It's a free download and uh, it's a free application, although you can pay for it i think there is a payment thing but for more often than not it's free anyway there you go download screen you download the 64-bit version especially if you've got a 64-bit machine which most modern pcs are you download it and then you install it and it uh, produces an icon on your desktop now, what Process Lasso is, it's a real-time optimization uh, program. And, and in it, what it does, it actually, especially for X-Plane, if you've got a hyper-threaded machine or a hyper-threaded processor, it allows you to balance the load across all processors and also identify maybe one core and one processor uh, to do all the menial tasks. So here you can see that I've uh, got it installed and I've got it running. And as I say, you can put all of the menial tasks onto one core and one hyperthread and everything else can be dealing with X-Plane. So what I'm going to show you is how to set this up, okay? It's really straightforward. Uh, you can see all of the processes there. Okay, those are all the things that are actually running in the background, but not taking any resources. And then we've got active processes. And right here, under active processes, really all that's running is X-Plane at the moment. And here is my X-Plane. Now, what this doesn't do, it doesn't guarantee an increase in frames per second, although some people have reported that, maybe 5, 10 frames per second extra. But what it does do, it smooths everything out. Now, it might be a little bit difficult to see in this little bit of video that I'm showing here, but believe me, everything is just smoother. As I say, it doesn't, it doesn't really increase frames per second, although I've seen maybe a boost of 5 or 10, but it just smooths everything out. And the way that it does it is by allowing one of the cores and one of the hyperthreads to deal with all of the mundane tasks and then devoting all the other cores and hyperthreads to explain. Okay, so I'm going to show you what you need to do is when you first get it, you need to go to File up in the top left hand corner and set it as a game uh, game enabled okay uh, so you'll see me do this here now in a moment there we go we zoom in and you click on gaming mode enabled okay so there we have it gaming mode enabled and you can see my active processes screen capture um, process lasso and x plane okay then what we need to do is we need to set one of the cores and one of the hyper threads to deal with the mundane stuff. So you right click on X plane, you right click on X plane and you put it uh, as a game. Yeah. And then you go up to uh, the second from the top there and you put all, you click always. All right. And below you'll see all of your CPUs and all of your cores. Now you want the top two, you want to uncheck. Okay. So that's, CPU core one and hyperthread one. Actually, it's CPU core zero and hyperthread zero. And uncheck those two, okay? As you can see here, I've indicated them at the top. Now, what this means is, is that the first two bars on that graph, top right there, the first two bars that are going up and down, they're dealing with, that core is dealing with everything to do with Windows. So I could open up Google, I could open up TeamSpeak, I could open up an email or anything, and they would all of that would be handled by those first two cores. You see, I've opened up Google there, and there's a little bit of a spike on those first two, core, first two uh, bars. All of the other bars are dealing with X-Plane, and only X-Plane. So really, you, you're concentrating a lot of your CP power on explain and, it, and it's a balanced load as well so you can see the graph there uh, you know red uh, it's well balanced i'm just showing you that i'm also using uh, screen capture software at the same time and the screen screen capture software and google and email and anything else is on that first core okay so it's on the first one and the second bar one is the uh, physical core and one is the hyper thread core okay 
And there's lots of other things you can do with process uh, lasso. Uh, and there's lots of things you can mess about with to optimize things further. But I've just left it at those kind of default settings. And believe me, it really does make a difference. I, I put a note up about it on... Um, on um, X Plane Dedicated, and you know, a couple of people said, "Yep, I see a difference. I see a difference." I've just put on the frame counter here, and uh, I, one of the simple tests I've always found is, you know, especially if you can find somewhere where there's a bit of weather, is if you look straight down at the airport, and I'm looking straight down now at the tarmac, and it was something like 50, and then if you look straight up at the clouds, we'll do it again from a different point of view. Here we go. So straight up at the clouds and it's you know it's fifty plus, and then straight down at the tarmac, and it's fifty plus. Okay, so those are kind of two static areas. This area, of course, you've got ground, you've got uh, distance, and you've got clouds, and you know it's thirty to you know thirty to forty frames per second. Okay, but apart from all of that, it just looks smoother. It really smooths things out, and it makes it. Um, a far more pleasurable experience and gets rid of micro stutters. Now, Process Lasso has been around for quite a while and has been used in the uh, FSX community uh, by a number of users. I'd never heard of it before last week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description below, which is the YouTube video I found from Aero Simming. So you can have a look at his YouTube video as well as mine. His is a little bit... I think he explains things a little bit better than I do. Um in relation to how to set it up but it is really simple it takes seconds to set up it's free although you can you can buy a license I don't know what the license does for you but I think it gets rid of the nag screen but I wouldn't worry about that uh, personally I, I am gonna buy a license for it um, because I'd like to support um, you know, individual developers so I'm gonna buy a license and uh, I, I think it's gonna be well worth the money I've seen a huge difference and when X Plane 11 is optimized further it's gonna be even better okay moving on to the B737 800 modified by Zebo there's another update I cannot keep up with the updates that are coming so fast but now uh, a lot of the pages on the FMC, the modified FMC, are working uh, and on both sides. So rather than just using using one FMC for part of it and then the other FMC for another part, you can use one or the other all the way through the process. And uh, there are a number of pages that have been added. TCAS has been added now, so you can see uh, traffic around you. There's been loads and loads of stuff added. I, there's so much... I can't even begin to say because it's just phenomenal. The, the guy's output is phenomenal. Now, once again, this is freeware, but there is an opportunity to donate. And so once again, if you've got a few dollars and you can afford it, uh, please make a donation to Zebo because without that donation, I don't think he's going to be able to continue this incredible work that he's that he's doing. Uh, and you know, every kind of dollar helps, especially you know, as an incentive, and also really you know for rewarding the guy for some excellent work. Um, one of the things that I really like about what he's done is that finally we can actually write a gate into there, so you can say what gate you're on. It doesn't really make a difference to the you know the the flight planning uh, aspect of the aircraft but it's just one of those nice little things that does make a difference whereby you know you you can add a gate and you know it just it's just one of those immersion factors the other thing that you can do in the FMC which I'm really pleased to see is that you can denote whether the runway is wet dry or uh, very wet well the conditions are wet wet dry and dry something like that so yeah that that is really nice that once again i'm not quite sure whether it affects the uh, performance of the aircraft but it's just a an, another nice immersion factor here you can see um, some of the flight plans that i've got in there and of course the flight plans are x plane or fps so it's a f uh, f p l n or f m s yeah so you can uh, get flight plans from your database. If you've exported them to that database, that's where you can get your flight plans. As far as I'm aware, all the modifications are internal, so to do with the FMC, the MCP, and the cockpit. I don't believe there are any external 
modifications and I don't think there's actually a requirement for external modifications because the aircraft looks good enough as it is. Uh, not forgetting this is the default 737-800 in uh, X-Plane 11 which is an aircraft that we've long waited for. Uh, somebody wrote on the forums the other day they'd like to see scimitar winglets and I think I might agree it'd be nice if we could have some scimitar winglets made for it. Moving on Better night. Now, I'm a little bit um, sceptical about this. Um, I've noticed that a number of people, a number of uh, developers, fiddlers and tinkers, what they're doing, they're going, they're going into X-Plane 11 and saying, oh, I don't like that, I'm going to fix it. So this person has fixed the night textures and, and it's available from xplane.org and it's called uh, Better Nights 1.0 or whatever. Um, Rotate MD80. Now the Rotate MD80 has been updated for X-Plane 11 and it is now Rotate MD80 version 1.30, I think. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to fly this because I only updated it this morning, but it looks pretty good to me. There seems to be some uh, fine tuning of the cockpit area certainly externally we've got you know like that shiny aluminium there and look at all the all the, all the wearing of paint around the rivets it does look like a, a pretty old aircraft so yes this has been updated for x-plane 11 and there are an awful lot of uh, internal um, features the cockpit has certainly been sharpened up in terms of photorealistic textures and uh, you also get a large number of liveries with it uh, there are two livery packs that you can download when you go to update it if you already own the md80 it appears to me to be a free update i downloaded it from uh, my account on xplane.org so it's one it's an aircraft that i paid for i think um or may, maybe nicholas actually donated this to me as uh, in, in my in my continued in his continued support of uh, xplane dedicated but you just download it from the site there put in your serial number and away you go right here we go xplane <laughs> sorry xenviro experimental clouds uh, 1.0 uh, once again, uh, somebody, um, obviously an XEnviro fan, has created these clouds, uh, new clouds for XEnviro. I haven't got XEnviro, uh, tell a lie, I have got it, but I haven't got it installed in X-Plane 10 or X-Plane 11. Um, but from what I can see from these images and from what some of my friends have told me, they're really happy with these experimental clouds. Uh, one, one person said that made things look cloudier. I'm not quite sure what that meant, but looking at some of these images, I think that this person has actually done quite a good job. Now, we do know that uh, development from XEnviro has stalled a little bit, but I think that's more a case that they're probably working very, very hard to get things sorted out. Anyway, have a look at the experimental clouds. They're free. This is Wycliffe Barrett. We'll see you soon. Cheerio. Yeah.